So today I would like to break down a transition and a video style I have used extensively during the past year. So let's open Final Cut and I'll share my screen with you and show you how you can create this by yourself, even if there's no one around to film you. We will just go through the completed video one by one. As you can see here we have put a seamless transition between the first clip and the second clip so the transition name is a morph or a flow transition you can find it in your video editor of course I'm using Final Cut but I believe uh, Adobe Premiere or, or, and others have a similar have a similar type of transition so I can see the transition name is flow and then it takes a couple of seconds to, to render and then once it's rendered between, between the first scene and the second here is what you're left with moving on to other clips as you can see we have added uh, we have added a separate of uh, different camera angles to spice up the video and make it more interesting so I have so I have this scene right now when I'm uh, where I have set up another camera or to be honest I have set up the same camera twice because I don't have uh, I didn't have another camera uh, while I was filming this but the second camera angle is very useful to capture a different low or macro perspective for your shots for example take a look look at this shot we got earlier where I'm throwing the grapefruit from the knife which is already pre-cut on the table and then all recording it with a macro lens to give it another bigger perspective so what sells this effect is the effective usage of reverse and fast motion and of course using a flow transition to speed up everything as you can see I have activated the retime editor by selecting all clips and then clicking on the time control and then there is height retime editor and there is show retime editor of course by using the retime editor you will be able to uh, easily uh, easily uh, manage your clips speed so the orange color in the retime editor means a slow down clip so this clip uh, with, with the orange color is slowed down by one quarter of its original speed and then uh, if we turn off the reverse effect you can see how this how this clip was shot uh, in the camera so this is the normal direction of the clip and then here is the same clip when it was reversed as you can see it goes from bottom to top instead of going from top to bottom so by using all of this and using the flow transition and you're and creating our own sound effects around foley i think we have done a pretty good job what do you think we are ending the clip with a logical storyboard like it is me who is who is picking up the pieces and then tasting the fruit to make it a cinematic appearance and a fade out to end this video okay so let's go next let's cover the the foley the foley or sound effects is a is a great way uh, for you to record your own sound effects of course for free all you have to do is record audio preferably on an external microphone and place the external microphone while filming or while using external audio recorder so you need to place the audio uh, audio source which in audio recording device which is in this case the microphone uh, close to the source of the foley which in this case is the the fruit let me show you how this sounds without any additional sound effects in the video okay so this is a once again this is a very realistic sound and I have not downloaded it from anywhere I have just put the microphone near the fruit and then recorded everything in slow motion again if you want to add a little more realism to the scene 
we can try and see another version how I edited this video for Instagram Reels or for TikTok. Again, video ends the same. I just put some other camera, additional camera angles. I have put a fake VHS effect and then I'm supposedly using the iPad to unpause un this video. Again, let me just show you how these clips would have looked like without a morph transition and then here they are without, with the morph or flow transition. As you can see, this is without the flow transition and this is with the flow transition. As you can all agree, it's, I would say it's almost perfect. Okay, so last bit of uh, information I would like to share today for, for today's video is the recording aspect. Uh, now, since I don't have a proper behind the scenes video of this of this shot, I will try to show you some maybe some uh, still frames, some short clips I have recorded of my equipment. So let me just open the previous project. Let me just scrub to the project to show you some uh, camera angles and placements. So for the first clip in the kitchen. I have put the camera on a tripod and then I was using the I was using my iPad as an on camera wireless monitor. You see here you uh, you can pretty much use the same thing for almost all of modern cameras whether it be Nikon, Imagic Edge or the Canon app or the Fuji app. In this case this is the Sony Imagic Edge app which allows you to, uh, to monitor and adjust all the video settings on the fly, so to say. So, this is the how I was able to capture all of these scenes. And then, uh, if you are interested in an in-depth tutorial how to use this Imaging Edge application uh, for your camera in order to replace or supplement an external monitor, I would suggest clicking, clicking up here and uh, watching my full tutorial on how to record or photograph yourself uh, using a wireless display on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone. Okay, so before the first scene and the other scene, I have used keyframe scaling here, which means I have scaled the, not the first clip, the second clip, I have scaled the second clip to about more than 125, 130%. And here is how the unscaled clip in the vertical aspect ratio look like. And then here is the same clip when it's scaled in order to better match the the first clip. Beginning with clip number one, you see me uh, trying to cut the grapefruit in half by having uh, someone throw it at my side. And as you can see, let me just scrub here. As you can see, the first attempt is was unsuccessful successful just let me maximize this window so now back to final cut as you can see the first attempt is unsuccessful and then we are straight moving into the second clip where i have already pre-cut the the grapefruit and i'm just trying and i'm just gonna try to here is the second scene, second clip. And here I'm just trying to match uh, the second clip where the grapefruit is already cut into slices with the first clip to make it appear as there is a seamless transition between these two clips. Okay, so uh, before 
so uh, I have now I haven't I, I like I would like also like to mention that I haven't done anything to these clips right now other than just uh, conforming them to a standard TV and YouTube color space which is the Rex 709 let me just advance to the to the finished clip so we can see the whole video breakdown as it's edited it has an adjustment layer and a color grading layer again I'm going to show you how this video looks without the color corrections being done to the video and then here is the same clip with the color corrections applied as you can see I haven't done much to the video other than the basic adjustments to the shadows and mid tones and the saturation in the highlights in order to make it more punchy and vibrant without going overboard you can see the vector scope and the RGB luma meters on the left on the screen which show the before and after on how much we have expanded and edited these clips which were shot in HLG on a Sony. And there you have it. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'm very active there. Maybe follow me on Instagram. If this video help, has helped you in any way, don't hesitate to click the like button. Maybe subscribe and turn on post notifications if you wish to be if you wish to be notified by YouTube when I do future videos like this. Bye. Mm-hmm.